I am so appreciative to Rotary for selecting me as one of the teachers of the year. And congratulations to you, Eileen, and to you, Frank, also for, for this wonderful award. Um, I'm just also thrilled by the lunch. It's just so nice not to have to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or have leftovers in the microwave. So that's just awesome. Um, and I just am so thankful my wife, Jamie, my mother-in-law, Sandy, my sister, Donna, and my friends and colleagues from Rocky, Craig, and Lynn are able to share this with me, so thank you. You know, I all believe, you know, believe we all have life-changing moments. And as Jackie referenced, you know, mine occurred what seemed like a typical morning on a Tuesday in September. I was sitting in seat 2E uh, doing what I normally did. Um, I was flying to Washington, D.C. for my business, for my job with Shell Oil. Um, I was reading the paper when the pilot abruptly came on and said there's been a terrorist attack in the east. At that moment, that's all I could remember. Terrorist attack, 30,000 feet up in the air, my wife and child at home. Um, I started panicking and disbelief and shock just came over me. Uh, but I called my wife, thankfully there was a plane phone to be able to do that. And she was able to start relaying what was happening back east. As she spoke, the pilot came back on and said he didn't believe there was a problem with the plane, didn't make me feel that great, but that we were heading back to Houston. I just remember losing contact with my wife on the phone, and it just seemed like an eternity before I got back there. Would I make it? What if something would happen? What if something would happen with the plane? And as I sat in the seat, I just started reevaluating my life. I started thinking about why was I traveling so much? I had a beautiful wife and child at home, and I was doing it for a job that I really didn't have a lot of passion for. Soon after, though, I, once we landed, I set my life in motion to really change things and really pursue my teaching dream. Within a few months, we sold our house. Uh, I left Shell and moved back to Colorado and reconnected with family and pursued teaching. And from this point forward, I never looked back. As Jackie said, it was my high school teacher, world history teacher, Mr. Gammon, the one with the really cool British accent, all right, that actually inspired me to be a teacher. I was a kid living in Loveland, Colorado, and he gave me such a worldly view of giving back and really inspiring his students. And I thought, how cool is that? I want to be a teacher just like him. And from that moment, I set my sights on going back uh, to get my teaching degree at CSU. However, things kind of changed and it's, my life took a different path. And I went on to have a successful business career with Shell, but I still felt like something was missing. I had a great job. I was able to do a lot of great things in Chicago with the Chicago, Chicago Bulls and did a lot of marketing and activities. But I always felt like that teaching dream was gnawing at me. I tried to work with uh, inner city youth and I did uh, a lot of things with different management trainees to kind of fulfill that teaching uh, piece, but it never felt the same. So the, everything that happened on 9-11 really set things in motion for me. And I started to reconnect with my family. And my first job after getting my teaching degree is I worked at an alternative school in um, Greeley, Colorado, uh, working with at-risk kids. And I just knew the first day that I went in and I got to connect with the school and the students, I knew this was the job for me. Um, I got to work with some very challenging students with many different life stories, but it was so great to be able to make those connections and build those relationships and help them see the possibilities and embrace what their passions were. Um, I helped revitalize the school's catering business so that the students could learn new job skills and things that they could use in their life. I've been teaching for 10 years and I truly love what I'm doing. Two of the accomplishments I'm most proud of are building relationships and connect, connecting my students' teaching to world world opportunities. I believe relationships are the key to everything, and building strong bonds with my students are definitely the instrumental pieces to learning. Also, in the business and marketing curriculum that I teach, I really get to connect my kids, my students, to a lot of real world opportunities. And one of the ways to do that is through DECA and FBLA, which are two business clubs, which I get to co-advise with Lynn. And it's just an awesome opportunity to be able to connect students with getting over their fear of public speaking, uh, being able to get dressed with a tie and a suit for the first time, uh, just having that confidence in everything else 
to really be able to put their foot forward. And so it's awesome to be able to do those types of things for students. Um, and it's also pretty amazing. We get to go to some pretty cool places like the Broadmoor Hotel and Vail and some of those things, but those are always some of the benefits of it also. Another part of teaching that I love is leading Rocky's annual canned food drive. We affectionately call it cans around the bovel with the Lobo uh, piece on it. And it's all student driven. Uh, we run it through my management class and we're actually in the midst of it right now. And it's just a great opportunity to really connect students to service learning and really giving those things to be able to give back. Uh, last year, Rocky, the students and staff, we raised over $6,000 and over 8,000 cans for the Larimer County Food Bank. And what I'm most proud of is that when students really come and talk to me, they go, you know what, Mr. Papp, I never realized how good it felt to be able to give back, to be able to be supportive of my community. Hey, I know friends, or maybe I'm in that situation where we needed the food bank. And so they've been inspired to be able to to know that service and make that a part of their lives. And being a Lobo, I just love the community of support and giving that's really part of our DNA at Rocky. And Craig, I wanna thank you for continually just leading Rocky with such heart and in supporting an environment of inclusiveness and community. It really means a lot. It is my hope to continue helping students move from high school to post-secondary education or employment. In our CTE department, which is career and technical education, one of the things we really want to do is give students those tools that they feel successful after school. For some, it might be college. For some, it might be two years. For some, it might be just going right into the workplace. But being able to give them the skills to be prepared for that and make them feel confident what they're doing is some of the greatest gifts I feel I can give. And one of the things I really want students to be able to do is find what their purpose is in life. Whether it's giving back to others, whether it's finding that new skill or trade, whether it's just being successful in whatever they do, it's, it's being in their own DNA and what they can do. So in my personal life, I spent love spending time with my wife, Jamie, and my two boys, and Toby. And yes, there's not enough pink in the house, which is okay with me. Um, but they definitely keep me grounded and supported, and I thank you for that. Prior to this event, Jackie asked me, you know, if I could change, if I had a magic wand, what would I change about my life? And that was pretty easy. I guess if I could keep my shell pay with the teaching would be nice, maybe even a little bit more, so. But other than that, I am truly happy and I know that I found my passion in teaching and where I need to be. So thank you so much for this wonderful award, Rotary, and thank you for selecting me and for honoring the other two here. Thank you. Friends and family know that I do not like attention. I once gave my dad the silent treatment for a whole week for making me wear a corsage on my 13th birthday. Um, and he actually wanted to make me wear a corsage again today, but he didn't learn. Um, so a YouTube video, a photo on the district homepage, recognition at staff meetings, and two celebrations with large crowds later. I hope this is my final speech on the topic of me. But nonetheless, I'm really grateful for this opportunity. And I'd like to thank the Rotary Clubs of Fort Collins for celebrating educators and acknowledging the importance of teachers in our community. I am honored to be here today. What makes a good teacher? I asked my first grade students this question, and this is what they said. A good teacher is nice and loves her students, does fun stuff with her classes, makes us learn, tells us how to write the answers down on a test. I don't do that. I give them the skills so they know how to figure it out by themselves. Let's us have recess and Friday fun and does fun stuff and gives high fives and helps us learn. That's all winter. Um, gives us pause and lets us use tools. Let's us go somewhere where we want to go and is nice to us. Also lets us do things we don't want to do, but we do it anyway. Helps us when we're writing, and if everybody does it, we get a class paw. Lets us have extra recess and gives us hugs. My students had some excellent comments, but let's face it, they left a lot out. Teaching is a craft as difficult and nuanced as any other profession. And we, well, I guess I should say, others don't get enough credit. I went into teaching so I could work with darling little kiddos and find creative ways to teach them about the world. 
Who wouldn't want a gaggle of cute six-year-olds as their co-workers? I dedicated myself 100% to my master's program at UNC so that I would be prepared for a teaching job. I was thrilled when I received an invitation from Steve three years ago to teach at Putnam Elementary School in the Poudre School District. However, despite all of my studying and planning, nothing could have prepared me for all I would learn in my first year, wait, maybe the first month or even the first day. Teaching is incredibly complex. There's what's in the standards and then there is everything else. First, a little bit about my school. Approximately 90% of Putnam students receive assistance through the free and reduced lunch program. Many of our kids face challenges at home that nobody, neither students nor parents, would ask for. Coming out of my graduate program, I didn't know what it would feel like to have a student picked up from school by a social worker because their guardian was arrested while they were at school, or a student who didn't have anyone to read their book with them last night because their parent was passed out on the couch drunk, or a student who's tired because she's sleeping on a bed with three other people, or another who's waking up crying in the middle of the night saying, nobody wants me. It's in this environment that I've learned just how much every second counts for every child. I need to be intentional with every moment to build the academic foundation that my students need in math, reading, and writing to succeed in the next grade level and beyond. Not only that, I also need to make sure that I'm giving my students the social and behavioral skills they need to work well with others, adapt to an ever-changing world, problem solve, think critically, and self-regulate. We practice persevering in the face of challenges, celebrating our successes, and treating ourselves and others with kindness and respect. And yet when my students walk out the door at the end of the day, I know they have absorbed much more than the learning targets. They walk out with a feeling. Did I look them in the eye when I said good morning? Was I really happy to see them? Was I genuinely thankful for the mistake they made and the opportunity that, that it gave us all to learn? Did I listen to them when they told me about their weekend or their new toy? Did I recognize their efforts when they tried their best all day long? As a teacher, I am a role model. My students soak it up and watch my every move. I love all of my students and want them to feel valued for who they are. So I guess my little Gael is right. A good teacher is nice and loves her students. That's why I pull into the school parking lot before the sun is up, leave long after the bell rings, set aside at least one day per weekend to plan, spend hikes with my dear husband, brainstorming ways my students can track their own learning, and bring school books to the beach over the summer vacation, which I then got water all over. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> um, my students need my best, and they can't afford anything else. As my principal, Steve, likes to say, our parents send us the best kids they have. They trust us with their children for seven hours out of every day. It's an incredible privilege molding the future, and wow, I take this responsibility seriously. I am in no way the perfect teacher. A teacher's work is never done, and it takes a village. I might never have made it out of my first year if it weren't for all the caring, dedicated individuals who I work with, pushing me to keep learning, allowing me to make mistakes, listening when the day is difficult, and celebrating when it's not. I owe a great deal to my administrators, students, and teammates, and I am very lucky to receive this honor and grateful for those who support and inspire me day in and day out. Thank you, Steve and Linda, my administrators, for your tireless guidance. Thank you to my teammates for creating an understanding and appreciative environment. Thank you to my students for making it fun to come to work. Thank you to my husband for allowing me to fall asleep at 7.30 p.m. on a Friday night. It's a long school week. And thank you to the Rotary Club for, for the stage and all of the unwanted attention. <laughs>
my sister Trina, my sister Ruby. Uh, Trina was 46 and Ruby was 41. And so of my, of my original family, um, there's just me left and they were all, and they were all too young. Um, my dad never got the opportunity to see me graduate or uh, graduate from college or, or become a teacher, but I hope he'd be very proud. My sisters were, my sisters were hilarious. Um, they lived a tough life, um, but they were beautiful people. They had the biggest hearts of anybody I ever, of anybody I ever met. And I was giving a, a speech for the city one time, and I talked to my sister Trina, who lived in the East Coast, and she said, "What are you doing?" She called me at six in the morning. She said, "What are you doing?" And I said, "I'm going to do a speech." And she says, "Last time I got up, last time I got up to." Uh, give a speech and I was dressed up. It started it with, well, your honor. <laughs> and that loosened me up for, uh, that loosened me up for the, for the speech that I had to give. Um, my grandma, Benny, my grandma, Benaranda, um, when I didn't live at home with my dad, I, I lived with my grandma and she spoiled me and she gave me everything I needed and, and uh, she taught me um, many, many lessons in life. My dad was a kind man who was very um, humble, never thought he was the best parent in the world, but he was, uh, he was a big heart and he always tried to teach me to respect people. I'd like to thank my beautiful wife, Sylvia, who, um, who inspires me every day and supports me every day in everything that I do. Um, when I was working at Northside, she um, supported me and, and anything that I wanted to attempt, she, uh, she was there for me when I decided to stop working at Northside, which was a dream job for me at the Northside Aslan Center. Um, she supported me to go back to school to become a teacher. I've got my, um, my two daughters, Leilani and Frankie Sue over here, and my son Antonio, who's five years old. Um, they inspire me, and then I have my, my, my niece, Nicole, and Angel, and um, Joey. And these are students that you guys have had in classes, the ones that inspire you to come back to school every day as you were describing your students in class. Um, you, des you described um, the heart and passion of, of kids that are in our family. So thank you for what you do for them. Really appreciate it. I'd like to thank Deborah Bueno. I worked for Deborah. I've known Deborah since I was probably six years old. And um, my dad would send me with a note to Deb to, uh, to um, register me for classes or to um, sign me up for football or get me swim passes at Northside. I would just take her a note and, Deb, could you sign Frank up for football? And she always did. Then when I became an adult, I got the privilege to work with her for over 10 years. And watching her serve her community, watching her advocate for um, those those children in our community that needed it most was truly inspiring. That's one of the reasons why I love what I do is because of the example that Deborah Bueno has set for, uh, for me for um, almost 40 years. Uh, I really appreciate you, Deb, and everything that you've done for our community. Uh, sh the scholarship program that the City of Fort Collins does is, um, it is, I think the city budgeted I believe, I was trying to get the numbers this morning, but close to $200,000 for scholarship, uh, for scholarships, and a big part of that is, I remember when it was less than $5,000, but Deb worked tirelessly to make sure that people had opportunities to succeed. And because of that, um, because of that, uh, the city of Fort Collins sees the value in offering opportunities for our patrons, for our patrons um, here in Fort Collins. So Deb, your impact, will never be, you'll never know the impact, but it is just spread out through all of, all over Fort Collins for generations, and thank you. Can we give Deb a hand? She's awesome. I had mentioned earlier that, or last time, that Cheryl Butcher paid for my first college class, and she wasn't able to make it, but Cheryl Butcher, she took me from, I was working at Weber Middle School as a paraprofessional, and she took me to, um, she said, let's take you and sign you up for college. And as we're standing there, she's just giving me some information. She said, how much, how much to sign him up for a class right now? And I said, Deb, I mean, I said, 
uh, Cheryl, I don't have any money. And she says, I'm paying for your first class. And so she got me in the door. She knew how to sign somebody up for college where my family didn't. And so it was really, um, um, she's one of those people that, that picked me up when I really needed it. Um, that's what you guys do. That's what the Rotary Club does, is you pick people up with your, with your programs and your, and your giving that you give for organizations and for individuals. You pick up people and, and get them to those places that they need to be. And um, kids like me when I was growing up, we really appreciate it. We really appreciate everything that you guys do um, for the community. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jo uh, Mr. and Mrs. Long, they also supported me. Uh, I came across a hard time in college and they supported me. Um, it was either they support me or I don't become a teacher. And um, I met Mrs. Long, I saw her at the, at the grocery store and um, she said, if you want to be a teacher, come to, come to our house. So I asked my grandma, I was a little unsure about it. My grandma said, she said, if these people want to help you, let them help you. And um, I did. And they will never know how much they empowered me by what they did, but I'm always thankful to them for what they did. So what that's given me the opportunity to do is to pay everything forward. I see these people that paid forward to me, and that's my mission as a teacher. That is my mission, um, is to pay forward every single thing that I do at school um, to help my kids succeed. Um, I, had a, I had a friend that I went to elementary school with, and she wrote a, a paper her master, for her master's degree, and 35 years later, she let me read the paper. Our, she just wrote it a couple years ago, but it was from 35 or 40 years ago. And my teacher, she was talking about her educational experiences in classes. And um, on one day I went up to go hug the teacher. And um, the teacher said, the teacher said, don't touch me, you're dirty, uh, your hands are filthy. And I don't, I don't remember that happening. And I was reading the paper, uh, Penny gave me the paper to give to my, uh, to, so I could read it. And I went home and I was reading it to my daughter Frankie Sue about a year ago. And I actually started to cry when I, when I read the, when I read the um, paper. And I didn't cry because the teacher was mean to me. Because when I talked to my sister, she was mean to everybody. She was just, you know, we had those old school, tough teachers and that's what she was. She was awesome. But I, the reason I cried was because I knew I was that kid in school. I knew I was the kid that um, Mrs. Moore was talking about, but I didn't know that everybody else knew. I didn't know that 40 years later that somebody would write it in a paper. And what that, being that kid growing up, what it did for me is as I went, as I went along my path, I came across people like Deborah and people like uh, Mr. and Mrs. Long and people like Cheryl Butcher who picked me up, who gave me opportunity. And the only way for these kids to survive, to make it, is teachers like you and teachers like you to pick up those students when they need it the most. And that's what inspires me every single day. Um, that's what inspires me to, to, be a, to be a teacher, to, um, to try, and, to try and inspire the, my kids. But my grandma, one thing my grandma used to tell me is, tell me who you're hanging out with and I'll tell you what you're doing. And so going back to Lincoln, um, man, I hang out with the best. I have the best teacher staff um, in the city for sure. They're brilliant, pe they're brilliant people. And um, they've been kind of, as you were saying, they kind of uh, been teasing me all all week or for the last couple of weeks. They're carrying my tray. Um, they are, uh, they're touching me because I'm really lucky. Uh, one of them asked the school secretary if there was money in the budget for a red carpet to my classroom. And it's, you know, it's all been pretty embarrassing, but it's been pretty awesome. But my co-teachers are amazing. They're brilliant. As I watch them interact with our students, as I watch them, um, as I watch them thrive, I'm amazed every day by what they do for students. So I'm just a small part of what goes on at Lincoln. 
And um, I'm, I'm really proud to be part of that staff. I'm really proud to be part of what has gone on for Lincoln at gener or gone on at Lincoln for generations. And I'm really, really thankful. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be up here. And um, I'm thankful for all of you that showed up.